I study in the Word today with uh, a friend of mine, Mark, who's uh, going to share the Word with us, and I uh, hope you enjoy. So, uh, over to you, Mark. Yeah, we're just going to read from the Epistle of First John, chapter one. I just want to talk about Christian essentials. So this first chapter in the first few verses is talking about the Word being made flesh and being manifested. Verse 1 says, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled concerning the word of life. The life was manifested and we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. That which we have seen and heard we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son Jesus Christ. And these things we write to you that your joy may be full. The introduction to this letter is amazing because in verse 4 mm. he summarizes the reason why he's wrote this epistle. Mm. He says, and these things we write, he's thinking about what he's going to say, we write to you that your joy may be full. So God's word brings us joy. Yeah. And I was thinking that we're living in a culture today that is changing fast yeah. and changing rapidly. It's known as a, a postmodern culture. Yeah. Postmodernity, as you know, is truth is subjective in contrast to truth being objective. In other words, truth is what the individual thinks it is, yeah. regardless of what anybody else thinks. Truth is subjective, and because of these advances, there's been massive changes in areas of um, economics, mm. morality, and social media. Mm. And I was thinking about the older generation. You know, a lot of these changes can scare people. If you look at media, Facebook, Twitter, mm. Mm. technology, a lot of people who can't work, this technology feel isolated, they feel irrelevant, yeah. they feel yeah. not part of society. So there's massive changes in technology happening. You know, you buy a BlackBerry phone, mm. four months later you've got to update it because mm. the changes are that fast. There's the change in the economy, you know, we're living now, as you know, in a in a recession, an economic recession in Britain. Oh. Where we're, it's worse than the 1980s oh. when Thatcher was in power. Oh. But I like what one preacher said. He says, even when there's a recession, you can still live in God's blessing. Oh. So there's massive changes in the economy, and. And the massive big change in morality, where that is even seen as more subjective now. Mm. Morality. If you thought, think about the riots in 2011 when there were um, the riots in, in London. Mm. And I think they were a cry for help because we are living in days of uncertainty. And one philosopher said the only thing we can be certain about is uncertainty itself. Oh. So the question we have before us is, in spite of all the fast cultural changes in technology, economics and morality, are there things that God wants us to be certain about? Can we still be certain about anything anymore? Oh. And the answer is, I want to challenge people to read first John, the epistle. Because as I thought about that question, yeah. as I thought about, are there any certainties anymore? Are there any essentials? You see, what our culture says to us, our postmodern culture is, 
there's no black or white mm. anymore. It's just grey. It's just grey. But if you take the epistle of First John, mm. it is black and white from beginning to end. <laughs> yeah. And what God does through this epistle, through Christ, is he makes contrasts from life and death, mm. light and darkness, truth and lies, love and hate, righteousness and lawlessness, children of God and children of Satan, love of the Father and love of the world, mm. the Christ and the Antichrist. Mm. And 18 times is a key verse in this epistle, and it's we know wow. in first alone. He writes, we know the truth. We know that we are like him. We are children of God. We have moved from death to life. We know his love. We know he lives in us by his spirit. We know we have eternal life. We know he is us. We know we've been given understanding. And we know that we have been born of God. Wow. So the question, are there any certainties anymore? You know, you have to read the epistle of First John and decide for yourself. Mm. There's essentials and non-essentials in life. And people get into hot water when they make the essential things non-essential and the non-essentials essential. And that's what's happening in Christianity. Mm. You know, we never understand all the things we've experienced fully in this life. That's just life. But we can have comfort in knowing uh, that we know the one who does know and does understand. Uh, you know, we can live with mystery and uncertainty in the light of these bigger certainties. Yeah, yeah. So the question is, what are these certainties? So what I'm trying to do, really, through this study, <laughs> through this sermon, is... I'm building a foundation, I think, that will help Christians to keep balanced in a culture that's so unbalanced, in a culture that's changing so fast. This will act as a, as a foundation, and it's related to what we talked about last week, about Christian suffering, uh -huh. same kind of thought. So if we take systematic, if we look at systematic theology, Think about systematic and biblical theology. Yeah, yeah. We take the Bible as a whole and we ask the question if we take the Bible as a whole, mm. what are the certainties in Scripture that we can be certain about? Mm. The things that are the essentials of Christianity and God, the things that can never change, the things that we have to stick by. So the question is this, what does God want us to be certain about? Mm. And the first thing we have is that we have eternal life, a certainty of Christ being crucified, wow. buried, <clears throat> raised from the dead, mm. and ascended. In 1 John 5.13 it says this, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, mm. so that you may know you have eternal life. That's a no. Saying a no word is key. Mm. And you know we have eternal life now. Eternal life is not something you get when you die. Yeah. It's something yeah. that begins with Jesus. Jesus, who, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Mm. Jesus says he was the bread of life, eternal life. It's not, in a biblical sense, it's not, it's not a, a duration of time. It's a quality of life. Uh, uh. I've come that you may have life, and life in all its fullness, John 10. Uh. Life to overflowing. God wants our lives to be overflowing. Uh, another interesting scripture is, it says, this is eternal life, uh. knowing you. This is eternal life, knowing you. Jesus is our life. No, true life is found in a person, Jesus Christ. Uh. 
Not not in a holiday, not in a hobby, not in a some grand dream. It's found in a person and in a relationship with a person. Mm. Do you want to add anything, Jason? Other any of that? No, I just think that's a. I just think it's brilliant, mate. Thank you. Keep going, mate. Right. So the first certainty God wants us to be certain about is that we have eternal life. We have it now. It just begins now with Jesus. <coughs> the second thing is God wants us to be certain that we know he loves us. Mm. The prophet Jeremiah says, I have loved you. This is God speaking through Jeremiah. Amen. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Amen. And everlasting means there was there was there's never been any beginning. There was never a beginning to God's love and there will never be an end. Wow. It's never had a beginning, it's never had an end because because God is eternal and his love is eternal. Now there was a time that God began to create hmm. the heavens and the earth. And there was a time when God began to redeem through yeah. Christ, but there was a never a time when God began to love, yeah. because he is love, and the Bible tells us first, John, God is love, it doesn't say he has love, he says he is love, yeah. love is who God is, it's a manifestation of his character, yeah. and um, I was reading First Corinthians, Chapter 13, yeah. the great love passage, let's turn to it here, it says, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but I have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal, and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge. And by all faith, so that I could re remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not love, it profits me nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, love does not envy, love does not parade itself, it is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, rudely does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will fail. Where there are tongues, they will cease. Where there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part, and prophecy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is part will be done away with. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. Now, see, it says God is love, yeah. and here we have a definition of love, yeah. being patient and kind. So we can actually translate it, God is patient, God is kind, mm. God does not hold a record of wrongs. Mm. And um, I was thinking again about love. You know, it says that faith works through love. Uh, uh. And God wants us to manifest this love in our characters. God wants us to be patient. God wants us to be kind. God wants us not to envy, not, not to parade itself, you know, thinking no evil. Mm. That's what it is to to walk in love, mm. to manifest these um, these qualities, and then it talks about when I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Talk about maturity. Mm. Walking in love is walking in maturity. Mm. Walk walking in the Holy Spirit is what it is to be mature. A mature person, mm. and just about you know when we were, when we were children, we reasoned like children. You know, children are selfish, but adults 
um, when they're full of Christ, uh. they, they express and, and walk in love. Romans 8, 38, 39 says, Paul says, <coughs> I'm convinced that nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. Uh. He says that, he says, I'm convinced. You know, that word convinced doesn't go down well in the postmodern culture because he's not convinced about anything. Yeah. But Paul wasn't a postmodernist. <laughs> was he? He was convinced. Paul was certain of God's love. Yeah. How amazing. <laughs> yeah. He was certain. So that's the second thing. The third thing, what can we be certain about? God wants us to be certain that we know he is good. Even when things seem bad, yeah. And um, a lot of people talk about God being mysterious. I say no, His ways are mysterious because God is a revealing God. Yeah. God has revealed who He is in Christ Jesus. He wants us to know Him. You know, God's not holding holding Himself back from us. Mm. You know, He has revealed Himself in Christ. We can never understand Him fully. But there is enough for us to know. There's there's enough of his there's enough of him to know, for us to walk in faith. Mm. The mystery of redemption in Ephesians three, you know, has, has been been revealed. Yeah. So although we can't fully understand God's ways, we can be confident by knowing that a good God is behind them. Psalm one one nine sixty eight says this. You are good, and what you do is good. Mm. And the Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. And just to conclude, John Greenleaf Whittier said this, Here in the maddening maze of things, when tossed by storm and flood, mm. to one fixed ground my spirit clings, <coughs> oh, that God is good. So what does God want us to be certain about? God wants us to fix our eyes on Jesus and to remember <coughs> these foundational truths and, and use them as an anchor because they'll give us hope in the dark night. Mm. They'll cause faith to arise in our hearts when we start speaking faith. That in the midst of confusion, in the midst of mystery, in the midst of uncertainties, we can be certain that we have eternal life. Yeah. God loves us and that God is good even when things seem bad. Do you want to add anything, brother? Uh, I got a bit, I got a bit, uh, went on a bit there. I was meant to stop. <coughs> no, I, uh, I liked it how you, you brought out about no, how the word no was used so many times in 1 John, I really like that and uh, and about how you contrasted it with postmodernism and how you contrasted the Apostle Paul with postmodernism and how how there is certainties and there's so much attack today on on faith and mm. yet what you were sharing is so down to earth and so practical and so helpful uh, yeah. it just really builds you up so it was really good I tell you, brother, I sat here, right? I sat, I've done this a couple of years back. Yeah. I had the NIV Bible. Because I was, I was reading all these, these books to go in the Anglican ministry, and it was all like, everything's great, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I just sat here one afternoon, and the Holy Spirit just showed me everything in First John. Yeah. Brother, it was like the smoke clearing. And I just kept reading, we know, we know, we know. <laughs> Wait, and it was like the Holy, a holy it was a Holy Spirit machine gun, brother. I was like this: we know, we know, we know, we know. I thought I'm a lion. I thought it's awesome. Amen. I thought you can't get any more black and white than that. You know what I mean? But. I mean, that epistle puts the end of postmodernism for good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so... But I'm going to preach that in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Well, it's really good, mate. It's really, really blessed me.
Yeah. The Bible is so simple yet so profound, isn't it? I mean, you could oh, never, yeah. you could spend twenty years to you could spend your whole life studying that one epistle and never get to the bottom of it. Yeah. And yet it's so simple, but yeah, it's yeah. so deep, isn't it? Oh yeah, it's awesome. It's really good. A great epistle. It's interesting, like, everything is built on that first few verses of, of chapter 1, on 1 John chapter 1. Yeah. That which was from the beginning which we have heard and which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life. The life was made manifest. We have seen it and testify to it and proclaim to you the essential life. So it's based on Christ and and who He is in His resurrection. What what yeah. would, what would you say to someone who said, "Well, <clears throat> yeah, all right, you said all that, but um, you know, Jesus and all these people of these times, they're in the Iron Age and we're in the modern technology age. So why do we need to listen to Jesus? Why do we need to listen? Because they're in the Iron Age and we're in the modern age." Mm. What would you say to them? Well, I just talk about Jesus being the Son of God. Yeah. And um, Jesus was relevant before the Iron Age because there was Messianic prophecies even before that. If we go back to the book of Genesis. Yeah, yeah. You know, Jesus was prophesied in Genesis. Yeah, yeah. And all, and all the other books, so... If they're going to use the Iron Age as, as an excuse, it goes the re, re, salvation history goes even further back. Yeah. So, but um, it's a matter of Jesus being alive still, isn't he? Jesus, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yeah, yeah. He's always been there. He's, you know, he's eternal. He's, um, he's alive. Jesus is alive. Yeah. You know, people are experiencing him as alive. And um, what we find, we can read something objective in Scripture. Mm. Like it talks about when we experience the new birth. Yeah. We, we experience the joy of sins forgiven. Yeah. Now, I know that, that objective truth is, I know the Bible is true. Yeah. Because that's an objective statement. That when you experience the new birth, you experience the joy of sins forgiven. I know that's true objectively because I've experienced it subjectively myself. Yeah, yeah. So there's there's things Scripture says. I know it's true because I've experienced what it says. Yeah, yeah. The things it's talking about. Yeah, yeah. How you feel washed? How you feel you've moved from darkness to light? Yeah. How you give an understanding? Yeah, yeah, I know it's true because I've experienced it personally. Yeah, it becomes revelation. It becomes more. It it becomes more than just words on a on book. Yeah, it be, it's a that's how you experience the word of God being alive. Yeah, yeah. So you experience personally yeah. the objective truth that it talks about. Yeah. Um. So basically, these people who would say it's from the Iron Age, taste and see that the Lord is good, they, until they taste it, yeah, they just don't know what they're well, talking about. Well, I mean, people can say say things, oh, well, everybody experiences everything. You know, um, people might experience a relationship with Mabad or, or stuff like that, you know. Yeah. But... It's objectivity and subjectivity together, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And um, it's based on like one uh, one John. It says that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life. So Jesus really existed. He really died. He really rose again. There's evidence there, and we believe that, and it's objectively true. 
and then as we believe it we experience it in it, our experience and it we, we feel the power of it and the relationship with God through through the scriptures and through what it testifies yeah I think this is a powerful scripture in first John chapter 3 J yeah verse 8 I mean it's so clear why Jesus was sent in the scripture. I mean, it's just so clear. It's unbelievable. Yeah. But it says, He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. This is the purpose why he came. Wow. That he might destroy the works of the devil. Wow. How powerful is that, brother? Mm. Jesus came, this was the reason God sent him, to destroy the works of the devil. Mm. I think that's powerful. Mm. Mm. It's destroy the, the power, the penalty, and the partition of sin, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and even this, chapter 2, verses 22 to 23, who is the liar? Who is a liar? But he who denies that Jesus is the Christ, Jesus is the anointed one, he is Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Listen to this. This is the one for all the other religions out there. Yeah. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. Mm. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. And when it talks about acknowledging, it's not saying, oh, yeah, Jesus was, he was a great teacher. You know, oh, we believe in Jesus, yeah, we, we, we respect him, he's, he's a prophet. Mm. When it says acknowledge, it's not about confessing him as the Son of God. Yeah, yeah. As Lord and Saviour. Yeah. And eight, chapter 3 again, verse 5. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins. And in him there is no sin. Wow. In Christ there is no sin. So I can't say it's you either believe it or you don't. <laughs> <laughs> so so basically these clever cops who were who say, Oh, it's all all of the uh, dark ages and iron ages, basically if they're not acknowledging the sun, they're walking in the yeah. power of the devil mm. and, under the dominion of the devil and yeah. you know and that's what they're going to say, even though they might think they're clever. Yeah. They're just walking in the dominion of darkness. Yeah. Listen to this. Back to 1 John 5, yeah. verses 11 and 12. So clear. And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. Amen. I mean, how powerful is that, Jay? <laughs> Amen. You know, if you've got the Son, you've got life. If you haven't got the Son, you haven't got life. Simple. Yeah. You either believe it or you don't. That's it. Amen. And I just love this scripture here. It says... Amen, bro. I'm so whether it. He, this is chapter 5, I'm verse I'm feeling four. it, mate. I'm feeling it. <laughs> For whoever is born of God... Which... What's so, this? Chapter 5, what? Chapter 5, verse 4. Yeah. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Wow. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith faith in Jesus who is he who overcomes the world but he who believes that Jesus is the son of God Amen. so faith in Jesus is an overcoming faith mm. you can't even overcome the world without faith in Jesus Christ oh, amen. we're more than conquerors we're more than overcomers in Jesus and this is this is what it's all about, folks. It's all about Jesus. It's all about you can know him for sure. 
as your savior if you but repent and put your faith in him he's alive he's not dead and you can mm. have certainty you can know that he's alive by trusting in him and experiencing that wonderful relationship with him and know the power of God in your life it's better than sliced bread folks and you're missing <laughs> out you're missing out you bogged down with arguments and debates and discussions and all you need to do is look to Jesus and experience the living God and experience forgiveness of sins the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and being pulled out of darkness because that's where you're living if you're not living in the light of Christ sorry bro I just mm. had to say that oh, you alright Jay? you alright? but I just think I like, what, I like what McCarthy used to say he says the word of God's like a lion in a cage yeah he says you just even reading scripture you're opening the cage up and the word does the work yeah it's nothing to do with man yeah yeah it's to do with the word of God yeah Amen. And, um, yeah. Awesome, bro. Awesome, mate. I've been really blessed. Should we, should we close in prayer? Unless you've yeah. got any more thoughts. And then, uh, so, folks, that's Mark. He's given us a, a Bible study, sharing, sharing his sermon. I don't know about you, but it's been a great blessing to me. Uh, God's really used it to encourage me. And uh, we just trust that what he shared, that the seed will be sown in your own heart and that it will bring you closer to God. If you don't know God, uh, you can know him as your Lord and Savior if you but turn to Jesus and ask him to forgive you and trust him as your Lord and Savior. So we're going to close in prayer and Mark's going to close now. So thanks, Mark. <coughs> Lord, thank you for your word, God. Thank you for your hope. Thank you for your faith. Thank you, Lord, that in uncertain times, God, we can have certainties, God. You want us to have faith in certainties alive in our hearts, God. You want us to know, Lord, that we've moved from, from death to life, from darkness to light, mm. from children of wrath, to children of God from hell to heaven mm. thank you for these certainties God thank you that you want us to know that we have eternal life in Christ Jesus that you love each one of us personally father and know each one of us personally and that you are God Lord you are good Lord mm. even when things seem bad help us to Put these things into practice, Lord. Mm. Help us stand on your word, Father God. I pray for faith to arise in our hearts, Lord. Mm. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith, Lord. Mm. We have a world overcoming faith in Jesus Christ, Lord. Amen. Lord, it says that Abraham was fully persuaded, Lord, <laughs> of making that promise. Thank you that faith, Lord, biblical faith, is fully <laughs> persuaded. We are fully persuaded men of God, Lord. Mm. We are fully persuaded Amen. children of God, Lord. Amen. Lord, we do not we do not waver and stagger in unbelief, Father, but we wax strong, Lord. Amen. You hold up your word, Lord. Father God, we are not moved by what we see, by what we feel. Amen. By what we hear. We're only moved by what we believe, Lord. Amen. We believe the word of God. Amen. We stand on your word, Lord, when our senses tell us otherwise, Father. Praise you, Lord. Lord, we don't focus on the disappointment. We don't focus on the depression. We don't focus on the sin. We don't focus on the guilt. We take our eyes off those things, Lord, Amen. that would bring us down. We focus on Jesus, the author. Amen. The developer Hallelujah. of our faith, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, Father, God, praise you. We Lord. we speak faith, Lord, into our lives, Lord. We make a decision, Father, God. Father, we make a decision that we're going for gold, Father, not settling for bronze. Amen. But for gold, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, strengthen our feeble hands and knees, Lord. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, God. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. 
Fill us to overflowing love. We want to walk in that love, Father. Amen. We want to walk in that patience and in that peace. Amen. We want to walk in long suffering and faithfulness and kindness. Amen. Thank you that we are light in the Lord, Father. We obey, Father, Ephesians 6, and we give the devil no place, Lord. Amen. Amen. No place whatsoever, Lord. No place in our minds, no place in our thoughts. No, Lord, we put your word in our eyes, Hallelujah. in our ears, and in our hearts, Father. It says Hallelujah. your word is health to all our flesh, Lord. Amen. We thank you for your word, God. Thank you, we give no place, Father. We don't acknowledge Satan, Lord. When Satan speaks to us and tells us lies, Father, we say that's not in our covenant. We are redeemed from the curse of legalism, Lord, from the curse of the law. And we are blessed, Lord, with covenant children, Father. We are washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, Lord. Washed clean. Amen. New forgiveness every day, Father. Amen. Hallelujah. Fresh forgiveness now from heaven, Lord. Hallelujah. We claim, Father, Praise we you, confess Lord. your word. That your word says that if we say without sin, we are liars, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, Amen. He is faithful to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Hallelujah. We receive Praise that cleansing now, Father. Praise you, Lord. We thank Hallelujah. you for the cleansing blood of Jesus, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. We receive your forgiveness afresh, Lord. Pour Hallelujah. out your Praise Holy you. Spirit, Praise Lord. you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Pour out your love in our hearts, Hallelujah. God. Praise you, Lord. Fill us with your joy and peace, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, you've told us, Father God, to speak to those mountains, God. Hallelujah. To speak to those mountains of disappointment. Speak to those mountains of despair. Praise speak you, to those mountains of doubt. <laughs> speak to those mountains of fear. Praise and you, be removed, Hallelujah. Father. Hallelujah. We, we take the word of God, Lord, and we let it loose on those mountains. Amen. Hallelujah. We speak the end result, Father God. Hallelujah. Faith Praise sees you. and speaks the end result. Lord, we don't receive when we act. We don't receive when we see it, Lord. We receive when we ask, Father. Praise Believe yes, Lord. on those things you ask for, and you shall receive them, Amen. Father. Amen. God, you're looking for a receiver, Father. We confess we are receivers, God, in Amen. Jesus' name. Lord, we open our windows. Faith needs opening. We open our windows of faith, Lord. Praise you, Lord. We receive from you, God. Yes, Lord. We, we are receivers, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, this night. Bless Hallelujah. Anybody, Father, who's, anyone who listens to this, God, or Hallelujah, I pray your blessing upon them. Yes, Lord. I pray, Praise Jesus, you'll just come to them now and reveal yourself to them, Lord. Yes, Lord. I pray Hallelujah. for Holy Spirit encounters, Lord. Praise you, Lord. I pray that in Jesus' name. And um, thank you, Lord. I give you all the glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We are men of faith, Lord. Amen. Men of Faith in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I feel refreshed. <laughs> Praise I'm, God. I feel renewed, bro. All right. Well, I'm with the word of God, brother. <laughs> I'm going to close this now, folks, and uh, hope that you get a blessing from this, spread it around, and uh, encourage others to listen to it and uh, get a blessing, use it for your church Bible study group and uh, may it be an encouragement to you all and uh, God bless, take care now uh, this is Mark and Jason, uh, take care and God bless you